If anyone was still doubting that Anna was Medusa, this episode definitely clears that up. Now, there was a lot of speculation for pretty much ever since the anime began and we were introduced to Anna about what her identity could mean, what was her secret, and I never really paid too much attention to it as I was just kind of focusing on the things at hand, and there was three, four episodes back, give or take, it was a little while back. However, when that happened, it kind of like dropped the ball that, yeah, it's probably Medusa, but we're not going to like 100% confirm it, we're going to kind of leave it up in the air. And I was like, it's gotta be Medusa most likely, but this is fate, they can always change it, they can always spice it up. After this episode with the Mystic Eyes, absolutely, it's been confirmed, and I think the build-up to that, it was just so good. It was actually one of the most memorable moments of Grand Order to date, because rather than it just being on her side, this was a very heavy episode focusing on Gilgamesh and Merlin's view on humanity, and how they are both very similar, but with very different ideas, on why they protect humanity and you have a girl who basically from the get-go has said I hate humans yet travels with someone who protects humans and she goes and helps an elderly lady so she doesn't get killed and she will help with the flowers and things like that like this isn't someone who clearly you would think hates humanity and I like how they really set it up as like there's this like common thread tying these characters together as you have Fujimaro humanity's last master the person who will save the world and this is actually kind of like his best chance right now. He's actually been able to stay in one location for the longest he's ever been. It's a bittersweet feeling. He's almost feeling like he can do this. But at the same time, sometimes you don't want that journey to end. Because for him, this has pretty much been a vacation compared to his last rodeos. And to have a character like Gilgamesh who just is amazed by what humanity can create and the inventions that we come up with. And how he never plays favorites, which is what makes him such a great king. That he cares for humanity as a whole but he doesn't play favorites, which is why he's been so successful in his current version of himself. And then you have someone like Merlin who just says, I'm waiting for humanity to end. And that's generally a pretty like big red flag, like, okay, toss the guy off the cart, you take the reins, we don't need him. But I like the idea that he just wants to see what the last human will wish for or dream for in their final moments. And the idea that you're facing the end of the world Yet, you can't help but think, even if this was to be the end of the world, characters like you, Fujimaro, and just people in general, you're going to write a story that deserves to be passed down throughout the universe. And there's something so bittersweet about that, where you kind of love it, and you also feel this sense of remorse, as if it's coming to a conclusion, and there's never a guarantee that it'll have a happy ending. And to just have characters like Merlin saying, like, basically saying it's okay, it's just so interesting to see how they're really tying that into the idea of humanity and how there's so many different ways to look at and reasons why someone would protect humanity. And you have a girl like Anna who is convincing herself that she does hate humanity. And if you know anything about the Medusa tale, there's some very obvious reasons why, you know, Medusa would not like humanity. And it's interesting how, because she's basically tagged along with Fujimaru, to have her current version really go against what she believes and to be able to have her do simple things like literally just help an elderly woman who basically her family was like, you know, you can't have a shop, you're blind, apparently you can't even taste food, you can't even look after yourself, you shouldn't do this. And to have just this little girl protect you and, you know, just help you out in such a simple way and how she's refusing a flower crown. There's just so much about that trio and just how Fujimaru, I think episodes like these, it flexes why he was the perfect character for the Grand Order story, as it'd be very easy for him to be very one note and plain and boring, and I love how what he does here is there's so many times you get so much emotion from him with very little words spoken, as he knows when to speak his mind, but he also knows when to let people rant and just get things off their chest in the middle of this basically just like they're going through this tunnel and you're seeing like humans turn into such disgusting bees you have mosh wanting to break it and stop like you can't do this like we got to make sure we help them and you have fujimaro hardly say anything but just grab her shoulder you can see him shaking and applying a lot of pressure as he is pissed off at what he has to do and say but they have to keep moving forward or you can have a moment with just him and Anna and how he just listens to what she says. He doesn't like say, no, you have to accept this present. You're beautiful. You're perfect. Make sure you accept it. He just listens to what she has to say. He's a character who can definitely speak his mind. He has his like flirtatious nature. He has his more comedic side and he has what some people may call a boring side. But that boring side, as some people I've seen label, is actually the reason why he's a multi-dimensional character, not just some anime design trope, which, honestly, at the beginning of the Grand Order anime, I would have said he does feel very one-note, 
But that's the thing, like, you gotta give each story time to flesh out its characters, and we're not even done this anime yet, and I feel like the cast overall has evolved in such a brilliant way that they feel so multidimensional and not just like, you know, it's a gotcha anime adaptation or something like that. It actually does feel like a worthwhile story, which is why I've always said, even if you haven't played the game, this is an anime worth watching, just because... It is such a good story as of what I've seen, and I only played the first couple of singularities, but like this story, even having no knowledge on the stories that came before except for the first couple, it still lends itself to be such an engaging fate plotline with all the best things present, with obviously a lot of things that maybe will get some people to roll their eyes at. I mean, the dude is building a harem, but at the end of the day, it just kind of feels like the best of fate kind of mixed and matched into one you would think it would be a cluster mess, but it just turns into something so amazing that you can have just goddess alliances breaking off the pact and tossing a giant axe towards Merlin who would then levitate and then it's like there is so much happening but it feels so good and natural which only a story like Fate Grand Order would be able to get right. I mean when I heard about just the idea of like wielding the axe I thought giant goddess like that's I th you know like one handed axe no just tiny body spinning it like a chainsaw and I was like that is so perfect and amazing it is so ridiculous but I love how insanely strong this character is and just like every episode for the past while has had some form of action set piece that just looks so good like it is a destructive mess in the best possible way things are exploding and clashing you're feeling like you're in the middle of a sonic boom and then you just see the world around these characters be destroyed and on one hand, I think to myself, well, we got King Gilgamesh. He's a pretty good planner. He understands that should we just defend and not attack first, then we're going to get killed. So I'm going to send my best to do this mission. We'll defend here. It just feels like there's no way he can lose. But at the same time, there absolutely is a way that they can lose. And that's what I've really appreciated is even though there definitely has been a lot of lighthearted and really cute and adorable moments throughout this anime, this isn't perfect. This character hasn't succeeded in every singularity. This is humanity's last master, and he's had a hell of a time getting to this point, which is why it's a very hard thing for them to part ways with this kingdom, because it feels like they actually were able to stay in one location for so long, and not feel like they had to constantly be on the move and kept losing character after character, which yes, they definitely lost some in this anime, but at the same time, compared to what they've hinted at, what I know from the game, like, this is a vacation to him in a lot of ways. As bad as it is of a vacation, it's definitely better than a lot of things he's had to deal with up to this point. And I like the idea that it is such a personal episode. It really is Gilgamesh. It really is Merlin, Anna, and Fujimara really taking the stand and explaining why they fight for humanity. And there's so many different reasons, but they all feel connected in a really intelligent way, which you don't get to see too often. Usually you get one or two of those characters that kind of link up and you get a really good emotional understanding about their psyche and why they do the things that they do, but to see characters from Anna to Merlin really get into their minds and what they serve a purpose for, like what are they truly doing, and there's so much that only they will truly understand for themselves, but as a viewer watching having that eagle's eye view, we get so much understanding of the complexity to these characters, and it almost feels like War Fujimara, where a lot of characters don't understand why certain people are acting in a certain way, but Fujimara would just silently stare as understanding that they have their reasoning, sometimes he knows those reasonings, but other times he just recognizes that I trust them and I believe in what they're doing. Like if Fujimara truly thought Ana was going to be a ticking time bomb for humanity and every time she said she hate humans, he wouldn't have her on his squad, but there's something about the way she says it and the way she acts that even if she does believe that, clearly she's a valuable asset to humanity. And that's just so great. Like, it feels almost like we're approaching the last two episodes. I don't know if I'm the only one feeling that, but we still have seven episodes, I think, give or take, left of this anime, yet it feels like we're approaching the last boss, but we're not. Like, there's still so much more to tell, but they are setting it up almost like the second to last episode, the third to last episode. And the fact that this isn't even close to being the conclusion, it makes me so excited for the future because it's getting that excitement that you only get every so often with a select few anime where you're both excited and scared to see what's gonna happen next, but it feels like the end is near, but that's a good and also bad thing. You don't want it to end because it's so great, but at the same time, you don't want it to last forever. And I think that's really interesting with how they're striking the balance to make it feel so perfect for the medium that it's in and not just feel like a gotcha adaptation, but rather a worthwhile fate anime. This episode was incredible. It got some emotional reactions out of me. It got me to laugh a little bit and it also made me feel so sweet and just 
worried about what the future of this anime will hold and that's all I asked for from this anime and they're delivering it without <laughs> any struggle really. I was reading an interview there a little while back where basically before entering into the second core of the Grand Order anime, the director was saying that their production schedule is so ahead that they rarely see something like this where like almost every episode in the second core has an action piece and it feels like they're ahead of schedule. No matter what, the second core of any anime is always going to be a struggle because it's two consecutive cores, but he was just basically praising, like, this is a rare thing. You rarely see this in anime production, but this anime, we had the time and resources to put into it and make sure it felt as good as possible. And that's a really great sign going into the final stretch of this anime, which, yes, we still have a good chunk of this anime left, but it just makes me happy to see how healthy of a production cycle this anime has had, and clearly the quality shows because look at how much action we've had and how little dips and inconsistencies have been present. Great episode once again, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like, and remember to hit that subscribe button if you're happy new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.